Hello, I just had a financial education with Uncle G, and here are my 100 lessons learned on five steps to becoming a millionaire. Part one. Number one, if you don't have your money right, if you're not thinking about money, guess what? You're never going to make a sale. You're never going to push through the objections, the barriers, the hangups, and everything that goes on with a sale. Number two, Peter Thiel is worth $2.8 billion, $2 billion, and he said, the single-digit millionaire, either $1 million, $2 million, $3 million, $4 million, cannot even provide for his family with proper legal defense in America, much less for emergencies, divorces, major lawsuits, business lawsuits, or other issues happening, or even two kids going to college. Number three, Uncle G says what he means by, if you got $1 million, you're basically just dead bit. You were probably told, or we were probably told that, oh man, a million dollars is a million dollars. Number four, we have got to change the way we look at money. $1 million is not money. This is us making a decision. This is us make, being lazy saying, I made a million dollars. Number five, Uncle G said we need to do the math on a million dollars. One million dollars if we didn't have any income. Let's say we are 27 years old. How long would that one million, one million dollars last for? If, we're, if we have four thousand dollars of expenses a month, we have 25 years. How did we get that? $4,000 a month for living expenses times 12 months times 25 years will give us more than 1 million. It's 1.25 million. So you have no money left at 52 years old. That's 27 years old, your present age, plus 25 years. That equals to 52 years. You're basically broke at 52 years old. Where can you live on $4,000 a month? Let's assume $4,000 a month with no other income. We cannot rely on Social Security. We cannot rely on Medicare because they're all broken. And it's just a matter of when. So if you have $1,000 a week times four weeks, that's $4,000. And your groceries a month is $900 and plus rent. So it's not enough. Everybody's like, oh my God, you are the iconic millionaire. You're the $1 million net worth. Number six, Uncle G said that we should be worried because we don't have new income coming in. What happens if there's an, an accident, a major accident? Or two kids go to, Ameri to uh, U.S. college in America and they cost one million five to just send those two kids to American colleges. So we are all busted. Seventh, we have to understand that when we wake up each day, we need to make 80 grand this year or I need to make 8,000 or 10,000. Eighth, we need to change how we think about money. Number nine, that's 4,000 per month if we have one million, doesn't, doesn't assume inflation. This means if everything stays the same and nothing ever goes up, the rent will not go up, the mortgages will not go up, the car payment doesn't go up, nothing goes up. And he said it's very impossible because things goes up. Tenth, the problem is nobody talks about this because nobody wants to go on TV and say, Hey, millionaires, you're basically middle class that are worried about money. Eleventh, CNBC says it takes $5 million to live comfortably. Uncle G says it's $10 million with no income where he thinks you can live a life you wanted. Twelve, to get to $1 million, either... You have to make 40000 per year for the next 25 years 
or you make 80,000 per year for the next 12 and a half years, or you make 160,000 a year for the next six years, or you make 1 million in one year. That's how we get to 1 million. But don't forget the taxes aren't accounted in this equation yet. 13, we need to do our math. We need to get our target right. 14, majority of in us, including me, we are going for the wrong target. He says, oh man, I love this new car. You're gonna buy a new car like this. Look, we'll go back and we get a new car. And when our attention, we need to have our attention on the target. Number 15, the target is not the watch, it's not the car, and it's not the vacation. It's the freedom. 16, 67% of wealthy people surveyed said that they weren't going for wealth, for cars and boats and trips. The wealthy were going for freedom of worry, to not be concerned about money. Number 17, Every day, I wanted to be concerned about my kids. I want to be concerned about what we do when we have time together. I want to be concerned about how happy I am in my marriage. I don't want to be worried about pieces of paper that I don't have enough of, or where it's going, or what things cost. That's why we all need to make a sale. Number 18. How am I going to get there? The target. Number 19. We got to change the target and look at the target. Number 20F. We have the wrong target right now if we are struggling. Number 21. So, when I'm talking to my client who's contributing to my $10 million, every person I've sold, I treated like an investor who is going to invest in my future. He's going to pay for my college. He's going to buy my shoes. Every time somebody is paying for my needs and wants. So if I want to go on a trip, I want to stay in a house that costs $25,000 for the short one week stay. That's other people's money. They're going to pay for that vacation. 22nd. So you don't need to wait for a bank to get right. 23rd. The money that he put in real estate is other people's money. He's putting it in real estate. How he sold some stuff and the people gave him money and he put that money into real estate. 24th, we need to get our income to a place, a place where it does not pay for our bills, but a place where we can save 40% of our gross income. 25th, this 40% is more difficult than the 10 million target. However, if we can do the 40%, we can get to our target. 26. So when we sit down and when we do the math, what would it take for us to save 40% of our income? 27. If we make 10,000 a month and we want to save 40% of it, which is 4,000, we pay ourselves first. That's called storing or stockpiling. And the government, the IRS, wants 40% or 4,000. So we now have to live in 2,000. 2,000. So we need to figure out how to pay ourselves four grand. Now he asks, what's the problem here? We've got to live on 2,000. 2,000. It makes our lives hard on 2,000 of living expense. So just keep doing the math. This math you need to do with your spouse. You need to keep working on it until you're like, here, let's go buy a new car. And your spouse would say, hey, we can't buy that car. We, got, we ain't got no money. 28th, money is only good if you use it. 29, we have heard this many times, cash is king. However, cash is not king. It just sits there and dies, or you lose it, or if you leave money in the storage for a long, long period of time, he guarantees it that it will disappear. 
You don't want to leave it in storage for too long because it's going to be zero. All cash goes to zero it, because of deflation. 30th, how much money do we actually need? So th this is his example. To, let's say it's 20,000 grand per month. And so 40% of that is 8,000. We store that, we stockpile it, and 40% of it is the government. So that's 8,000 for the taxes. So we're left with 4,000 to live off. Now, let's say if we have a salary of 30000 per month, 40% of that goes for storage, which is equivalent to 12000 and 40% of that is the government, the IRS. So that's 12000 out, and so you're left with 6000 to live on. So now we can start seeing that we got to be north of 300000 or 360000 per year. 360,000 north. So that's 12,000 in storage per month times 12 months times 10 years equals 1.4 million. Now you're a millionaire stored. 31st lesson. You need to work on where's our money. 32. What's our driver here? 33. We need to be heavily money motivated from a survival standpoint. Survival standpoint. 34th, we are going to be broke because we need to invest that stored money. The storage has got to be invested. 35, the golden goose is only good if it lays eggs, if she lays eggs. Otherwise, we can kill the goose, eat her for her chicken meat or goose meat. We need money to make babies. 36. So our goal is to invest the storage money and to continue to do that until that pa passive money from our investment is equal or greater than our income. 37. This will be a tough game. It is a tough game. 38. When we make this move of storage money to investing the money, we should not invest it in anything that is amazing. 39. We can't risk this investment money. 40th. Warren Buffett says, don't lose money. That's number one. What's number two? Don't lose money. And Uncle G says, what's rule number three? Don't lose money. 41. So what can we invest in? 42 lesson. We can't leave it in the bank because that's losing money. The bank don't pay us anything. It takes 833 years to double our money at the bank today. 833 years to double our money at today's bank rates. 43rd. So if we don't know this, we need to start looking at this and say, what am I doing with my money? 44th. We need to confront the beast. 45. Our target should be my passive income exceeds my monthly income. 46. We just need to do the math. How much money would we need invested? 47. So if we have passive monthly income that exceeds our salary, that is not counting the bonus, then that makes us more motivated. 49. It used to be like this. If you need enough debt, then you'll get motivated. 50th, it's going to be motivated to a little while, but when we realize that, it's not fun at all. So I hope you learned something. Take care and God bless.